today by Fredericks. Cut away, there's Gilmore, the fielder, at third man on the fence. And a fine throw coming in, so West Indies scoring the first run off Lilly. And that's the way to play the hook shot. The short one, beautiful in position. Kept the ball down, takes a single to deep long leg. Sort of shot that really appeals to the West Indian supporters here. Shot is out of the ground. Oh, well, what bad luck that was. Played a magnificent shot, trod on his wicket, hit a six. And a very disappointed Fredericks there. So one can only say it was a little bit of stroke of a luck there for Dennis Lilly. It was a short ball, beautifully played, hooked out of the ground at deep log leg for six. And then knocking back his wicket. Beautiful hook of his legs for four. Beaten there for the first time. Slight bit of movement down the hill there for the first time by Gilmore. And that's it, go behind, and there's a flick. Not the greatest of shots by little Elvin Kelly Charan, but Gilmore Rude. Kept him quiet all through that over, bowling a very accurate and good length. Finally, making the little man of a flick outside the off stump. And he paid the penalty. That's uh, no runs. No chance of cutting that off. Jeff Thompson not able to get to that. And four runs to Greenwich to take him into double figures. Marsh, Thompson's first wicket, very, very low and away to Marsh's right hand. Effort is to turn up his legs this time by Lloyd. Just going to beat Walker onto the ropes. Slightly downhill here at Lord's and with his quick out, feel the ball gathering pace the whole way down to that tavern boundary. shot out of the ground, superb shot there by Lloyd, the West Indian crowd on their feet, no doubt at all about that shot, beautifully played, in position so quickly. Good ball there by Lilly, intelligent piece of bowling, held it back, bowled it at very nearly half his normal pace. Variation of pace there, uh, beating Clive Lloyd. And he's dropped him. A let off there for Clive Lloyd, a disappointed Edwards. Didn't middle it, probably. The error there in the fieldsman mind was the ball didn't quite come through at the pace he was expecting it. Shot for four runs, just straying in direction down the leg side, and Lloyd made no mistake. So the hundred comes up now for the West Indies. It's also the 50 partnership between Lloyd and Canai in only 49 minutes, and Canai's made only six of them. So the whole thing dominated this morning by Clive Lloyd. Straight down the ground, landing just inside the boundary. 51 to Clive Lloyd. In the air, but quite safe. And Kenai has broken the hole the Australian bowlers have had on him. Ross Edwards is coming round under that and he's put it down. Another very difficult chance for Edwards and he's unable to pick up that one either. 
that was perfectly placed by Ian Chappell. He put Edwards out there for that lofted shot away on the offside. Lilly is the man coming in under that, and he's put it down as well. Three chances dropped by the Australians. All of them difficult. And that's hoisted away into the green stand back of it. Tremendous blow by Clive Lloyd. Wasn't all that short, in fact, something like a good length ball, but picked it up, timed it sweetly. And he moves on to 73 and makes this partnership between himself and Ron Canai worth 100. And that's come in the quick time of 85 minutes. And a short one hammered away this time by Canai for fourth and mid-wicket. The crowd ever anxious to toss the ball back, let them get on with it. chasing it but it's four more really is a tremendous display of bat in this he got it in no uncertain terms beautiful flashing cover drive typical of the man the bat raised the crowd on their feet and what a delightful exhibition this has been by Clive Lloyd you couldn't really wish to see a better hundred than that in any form of cricket. A hundred made out of 190 for three. And the whole of Lords on their feet applauding this man, whether you're a neutral, whether you're a West Indian or an Australian. Nobody can fail to appreciate it. His hundred coming in exactly 100 minutes of only 82 balls, including two sixes and 12 glorious boundaries. What a glorious shot. What a magnificent shot. Wide half volley waiting for it. Cracked it square. Up goes the hat. It's 50 now to Rowan Canai. Tom Spenson if he feels it's carried. A long deliberation, one either says yes or no fairly quickly there. But he's given him out, yes, it's been a long time. So the end of Clive Lloyd, catch Dayton by Marsh behind, a wicket for Gilmore, and the end of a really brilliant innings. He's bowling. Taking his third wicket, can I fairly rapidly following his part the Lloyd. But the end of a most valuable innings there by the veteran West Indian player Rowan Can I. And the man causing the damage, three wickets then to Gary Gilmore, following his six against England in the semi-final. Richard's turn to go this time. So this young man who's been held back, he only bowled the first spell of six overs and took a wicket in that, has now come back in three overs, he's collected another three wickets. His figures at the moment standing on four for 34 and brought this game very much again Australia's way. 209 for six. Change in the bowling. Doug Waters has bowled his last over and it's now to be Jeff Thompson bowling to voice. Lily and it beats him into the boundary. It's wide of turns a good shot too. Picked that up beautifully off his toes. And that boy's is facing is Jeff Thompson. Pitch. 
So these boys fall into that full pitch. Quite happy about it. 34 very valuable runs in brisk time from the Barbadian. Only 43 minutes, the seventh wicket to go down. Score on 261. He's had a go at that. He's middled that one all right. A fine shot by Derek Murray. And Miller getting the treatment. Another six. And he will not learn that you can't bowl them halfway down to these Western Indian cricketers, no matter what order they come in. Derek Murray at number nine. A fine hook shot into the crowd for six. Boosting this West Indies score now to 282 for seven. And Murray has gone very quickly into double figures. That's an easy court bowl. Gilmore snapping it up. And that gives him five wickets. So five wickets for Gary Gilmore. Following his six wickets against Leeds up at Headingley. What a great start he's had to this first tour of this country. And Ellis on himself of his feet there. <laughs> Gilmore not too worried about it, but he could be because they'll run a second one. So two more, that's it. It's the end of the West Indian innings. Their score standing on 291 for eight. Superb century we've seen from Clive Lloyd. And the bowling honours here taken by Gary Gilmore, the man walking off with five wickets to his name. Clive Lloyd made that thunderous 100 out of 140 in exactly 100 minutes of only 82 balls. Those are statistics that really mean something. And that's the first wicket down. Caught that second slip by Kali Chiran, the breakthrough that West Indies needed so badly. Boyce just getting that leg cutter to run away from the right hand of Akoska. Julian now to Ian Chappell. It's a very good stroke and it's an admonishing look from Clive Lloyd to Julian. I shouldn't think Lloyd's instructions were to bowl any bounces to Ian Chappell unless it's Andy Roberts who is going to do it. Well, he's uh, got his runs but not off the middle of the bat. But they all count. And a brilliant diving effort there by Boyce. Been so many difficult chances gone to ground here today. And he's got that away successfully and well wide of mid on for four. So Ian Chappell here has got over the first problem, the one of not losing early wickets. It's a short one, a great hook shot there by Alan Turner. Really latched under that one, waiting for the short one. Put it away decisively behind square for four. Feel very much on the defensive, no slip for the West Indian captain. So the two captains here in direct opposition. So Clyde Lloyd come on, throw there from Viv Richards, a delighted Viv Richards, and Alan Turner slow to set off, was ambling through thinking he was safely home. But the speed, mobility of Richards tripped him in the end, and that's a blow to Australia when they were going so very well indeed. It's away all right this time, beautiful shot. Elegantly clipped off his legs there by Greg Chappell. It's four runs, very fine glance there by Ian Chappell. So five runs from this over. Andy Roberts. Oh, and this must be a run out here. He must be out. Richards again. Tragedy for Australia. 
absolute tragedy with a misfield there. The old rule of never run on a misfield. Greenwich. Waving that he hadn't caught it, it bounced just in front of him, but a great piece of fielding. Well, I would put that down as a chance, I think. Derek Murray just getting the left glove to it. It's a good shot from Ian Chappell. Ben Van Holder is the first one. They'll pick it up inside the boundary. It's three to Chappell, and it brings up his half century. So, good fighting innings from the Australian captain. Oh, it's a glorious shot. Short, cut away off the back foot by Walters. Clive Lloyd now pushing a man back on the deep square leg boundary. So a man on the deep mid-wicket boundary. Two men back now. There are the fields. I think that Ian Chappell will be having something of a dart at him. Well, there's plenty of open spaces. And again, they're in trouble. And again, he's run out. Oh, dear, what a calamity for Australia. And it's this man, Richards, again. Another glorious crack through extra cover by Walters. That's going through for four. Five Lloyd to start his 11th over. And he's bowling. So that's the wicket West Indies wanted. And that could be the turning point in the game. Walters, who looked and gave us a glimpse here of his true form, fall into Clive Lloyd with his score on 35. A fifth success for the West Indies with the Australian score standing at 170. Well, they possibly think that the cup is now theirs. But that's a critical wicket there for Clive Lloyd to take. 46 overs gone now. 99 needed in 14 overs. Well, I saw West Australia beat New South Wales in a Gillette Cup match in Sydney last year in similar circumstances. He's put him down. Derek Murray, a straightforward catch. A little bit of extra bounce there, and Murray was up off the ground in trying to take the catch. The shoulder of the bat, and Murray was unable to hang on to it. Boyce to Marsh. Bowl him, and that, I should think, is just about the end for Australia. Marsh, bowled by Boyce, aiming away through mid-on, he made 11, and the Australians are 195 for six in the 47th over, chasing 292 to win. It's a fine shot from Gilmore. Picked that up nicely. It's a good shot from Edwards, who's not a hooker, but he swung that around. He went with the ball. And that must be out. Can I? And he's caught it safely. Just 10 yards in from the boundary. An attempted bouncer from Keith Boyce. And Can I in all sorts of trouble there. shot from Walker. Now six overs have cost 30 runs. Boyce now is bowling his 12th over to Edwards. And it's in the air and Fredericks must catch that. A simple chance. And Australia have lost their eighth wicket for 231. Facing Keith Boyce. Holder. And that's out. The fourth run out of the innings. A very fast throw from Holder. I wouldn't mark it down as one of the best pieces of running between the wickets I've ever seen from any cricketer. And Max Walker is out. And 
Thompson has hit Roberts straight down the ground before the first ball of Andy Roberts over coming back to relieve Bernard Julian his ninth over and Thompson has taken four runs from it fine shot from Thompson picked that nicely off his toes and into the square leg boundary for four that's high in the air he's middled it pretty well over the top of Clive Lloyd so counts as four more Australian dressing room watching it to the bitter end fingers crossed up there hoping for a miracle Occasionally there in it, a little touch down the leg side. It's coming again. How good's the throw going to be? Is it out? Anticipating the run out, the crowd coming on the field, and then must go back. And it's holder to Thompson. And that's it. That's it. He's told him to go back. The overthrow off a no ball again. Overcome the crowd, they think it's over, they didn't see the no-ball signal, and these two batsmen are still running, and it's absolute chaos out there, nobody knows what's happened. They can keep on running, Lily says, keep going, we can run ten here, because nobody can find the ball, the crowd are on the field. And everybody trying to find out now how many they actually did run what happened it was a no ball it was a catch state it was a shy by Fredericks at the wicket and they run the overthrows and Tom Spencer doesn't quite know what it's all about down there it must be a very weary Tom Spencer too nine and a half hours he's been out there officiating And the British Bobby taking command in the end. Ushering on the left. So a really facing holder. 19 wanted off 10 balls. There's at least another single. Will they chance a second? No. Thompson slipped in actual fact. I think he might have gone for a second otherwise. So there are just nine balls left in this pulsating match. 18 runs wanted. The field way back on the boundary now. Only Fredericks on the offside, capable of saving a single. Apart from that whole West Indies side. Packed around the boundary edge. And Thompson, who's played so well for his 21. And, and he's out, and it's a great step, and what a way to end the match. 274. And I've never seen cricketers move as quickly, gathering the sacred stumps. The charge of the brigade over. A win for West Indies here by 17 runs. And unforgettable scenes here at Lord's Cricket Ground at the end of one of the greatest one-day matches one could ever possibly wish for. 291 scored by West Indies, 274 the Australian reply. And the crowd gathering in there now, mobbing over the pitch. They've waited a long time, Keith Boyce still unable to get through. A great mob of people that have surged onto Lord's Ground here. The British law doing its best there to keep this excited crowd away. And Prince okay. Stewart, of course, president of MCC, with the trophy in his hand, beckoning to Clive Lloyd to come up and receive it. And it goes to this magnificent cricketer and how well he 